Hi, so uh, today I wanted to do a beginner's perspective of some entry-level fountain pens. I love pens and I have a ton of them, but I have pretty much been using Pilot Varsities as my fountain pens now for years. And I wanted to get into like official fountain pens. Not that Pilot Varsities aren't official, but I'd like to try different inks and not be limited by what Pilot Varsities offer. I know that some people reuse their Pilot Varsities and refill them with whatever inks they want. I didn't, I haven't, I always just throw them away when I've used them. They're really nice, um, but I wanted some variety as far as nib size and ink options. So I wanted to show you what I've acquired pretty quickly as far as, you know, getting into real fountain pens and for not that it's it's fairly inexpensive. I think fountain pens can be as expensive as you want them to be. I have seen fountain pens that are like, you know, $1,200 and then some that are in the hundreds and some that are like, you know, $9. So I think that, you know, it can be as expensive as you want it to be, but you shouldn't let price or um, the sophistication of fountain pens be intimidating to you. I'm certainly not an expert on anything and it's pretty easy to change out nibs and it doesn't have to be that complicated to enjoy what you're writing with so I just kind of wanted to show you some of what I have and just give you that beginners perspective of some entry-level things um, and things that I would have wanted to know when I was buying my fountain pens before I do that I just wanted to show you this this is really cool this is an ink vial holder I think it's actually a test tube holder but it will hold samples of ink. So Goulet Pens does this subscription every month and it's ten dollars a month. It's called Ink Drop and this is March's inks that they send out. They'll pick five inks a month and they have some sort of a theme. So this one was Fade to Black. They have a little story about it. They've listed the brands and the inks that come with it. And along with this subscription, not only do you get your five inks every month, but you also get access to a discounted part of their website where they don't just have their inks at a discount they also have other things like this this holder would have been twelve dollars if I had just waited but it was part of the order that I placed when I placed my ink drop order so for March it came with those um, and the reason why I ordered an ink drop subscription is because it's not that expensive it's ten dollars a month <clears throat> each sample is two milliliters and even though they pick what you get it's still a variety it's a variety of brands and it's a variety of colors and I think in the future and just from looking at their past um, their past offerings it would have been some colors that I wouldn't have normally chosen but that doesn't mean I wouldn't have liked them once I tried them so it, I ordered it in order to get a variety I'm new to found pens and ink as far as this goes and so I, I didn't know what brands were good everybody has their own preferences and this will allow me to try a bunch of different brands a bunch of different colors without actually committing to a huge bottle and then feeling bad if I don't like it and I you know don't want to use it and not really spending all of that money I know that it's ten dollars a month for you know in essence ten milliliters you're paying a dollar a milliliter but you know if I don't like Lamy Black, I've got two milliliters of it. I wouldn't feel bad throwing this away in this, which holds 40. I could just keep it there if I wanted to use it and need a backup, or maybe I'll love it and I want to get a whole bottle of it. But this gives me variety, and as a person that's beginning to get into this stuff, I think it gives me some nice options and exposure to what's out there and available. This grid is, or this, um, this holder is numbered so I think you could make a pretty complex grid if you wanted to but at this point I have five and they're all the different black ones or the fade to black and uh, I currently have I think it's pronounced Diatramentus Diatramentus in silver gray I have this in my Pilot Metropolitan which I'm going to show you today I also realized um, I'm not good at making short videos so if you're willing to stick around it'll be great <laughs> In my order, um, I also, so I ordered this, I ordered the Ink Drop subscription, I ordered 
a 1.5 stub italic nib for my Lamy Safari, which I actually have on the Lamy Safari. This is the extra fine black nib that I bought with my Safari when I originally got it. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to, to change them out. Um, but they sent it to me in this little vial, which I thought was cool because now I actually have a place to keep them where I won't lose them. And I can just put it in here, and it's brilliant. So, that is that. Now, my order consisted of the nib, the holder, the ink drop subscription. I also ordered a Pilot Plumix and a Pilot Metropolitan. This is my, the, the Pilot Plumix, I don't have all the original packaging, but it was packaged really well. Everything was really tight and secure. It was almost difficult to, to open up but nothing was rattling around. Everything came in perfect, pristine condition. It was really fast. The nice handwritten note on my, my invoice was really nice uh, and thoughtful of them, so kudos to Goulet Pens. The Pilot Metropolitan came in like a slip cover and then this box. And so I'm just using this to keep my small little you know, collection of fountain pens. It has like a magnetic closure, so that's kind of cool. I mean, the pen itself was like, I think it was like $16. For a $16 pen, the packaging was already impressive. Um, but it gets even better. So here's my Lamy Safari, the charcoal matte finish. It did. I did get it with the black nib, but currently I have the stub italic on it that I'll show you a writing sample of. So let me tell you about these pens. Okay, so what I was trying to achieve in my order was a uh, set of pens and nibs that would provide me with a variety of writing abilities, styles, but for as little money, as, as, as little cost as possible. I'm sure that other people can get more with less, but this was kind of how I went about doing it. So I had the Lamy. This was my first purchase. It came with the extra fine nib that I ordered. I ordered the stub italic nib and that was $13. So that was the Lamy situation. Then I saw these Pilot Metropolitans and seriously for like $16, I, I can't believe this pen cost $16. Was it $16? $19? Whatever it was, it was under $20. I think it was $16. And it is beautiful. Um, and so this comes with a medium nib. Then through some video watching and research, I found out that the Pilot Plumix, this has more of like, I would, I think this is like a 1.1, but it says medium and it's Japanese. So I, I don't know if it converts to the same. I know it's a little bit different than like a European size medium nib, but it has an italic stub nib on it as well and it's smaller than the 1.5 Lamy Safari. So this pen's nib will fit on this pen. So these are interchangeable. This pen was, I think, $9. And it, it looks like a $9 pen. It's not ugly, but it's not this, which was just like, you know, a few dollars more. So I think for around $50, I have four radically different looks to my writing. I have an extra fine nib, a medium, a smaller italic nib, and a larger italic nib. So I was trying to like build my writing capabilities as quickly and cheaply as I could and I think I've done for myself I'm satisfied with with what I've I've got here. And so I just wanted to kind of show you some of it. Okay. So the Lamy Safari, I bought a converter for it, but I am not above trying out what comes with it. So I have been using the Lamy blue ink cartridge that came with it. You can see I've used quite a bit to write some letters, but I still have, oh, a little bit left. I think if I turn it over, I've got about like that much left in here. So I'm going to use it till it's gone. And then I'll fill my converter with one of my ink drop samples. So I'll show you what the 1.5 and the EF nib look like, and I'll show you how to swap them out. It's so easy. Don't be intimidated at all. So I'm going to show you that. 
Then I'll show you um, the Pilot Plumix. And so this is a see-through plastic pen. And again, I got it because I can, you know, use the nib in both pens. But when all is said and done, this isn't a terrible pen to write with. It's got a screw-on cap and it's super lightweight. It, it, it weighs nothing. My only issue with it, you know, if we're not looking at like aesthetics, is the same issue that I find I'm having with the Lamy Safari. So as beautiful as this pen is, as much as I like it, and it's like my first real fountain pen, so I think I'm, you know, somewhat attached, is the grip. I don't have a problem with the shape. You can see that it's kind of like a triangular shape. I don't have a problem with that. I don't know why this pen grip feels so huge in my hand. It's the same complaint I have about the Plumix. In fact, I think the Plumix is even larger. It's hard to tell. It's clear, so it's kind of like weird optical illusion. But it's the same shape. It's got that triangular shape to it. It's hard to see on the, the Plumix. Yeah, the Plumix is definitely, I think, wider. But there's just something about the grip size of these that it feels like I'm writing with a gigantic pen, like one of those big, huge kid pens. And... It's okay for a little while, but if I'm sitting down to write letters for a long time, I find that it's fatiguing to hold something that's, you know, that large. I don't know if other people experience that. I don't think I have abnormally small hands, but it, these pens, the grip area, I can, I can write with them, but it's, after a while, like, my hand starts to cramp. It's really strange. The Pilot Metropolitan, I can write for days with it. So even though this is heavier than both of these, these are much lighter, especially with no cap posted on it. But um, I don't know. There's something about the grip. Maybe it is the shape, and I just don't realize it. Anyway, um, this one I have inked with the cartridge it came with. It's just a pilot blue cartridge, and you can see I've used up quite a bit of this one. I have this much left. Uh, right about there and so when this is gone I bought a converter for this and I can either and I think I will I'll keep this inked maybe I won't swap the nibs out I, I don't know it's kind of nice to have three different ones inked though at the same time and not have to worry about cleaning them out and all of that but I certainly use the cartridges that come with them because why not it's ink it's just as good as something else and it gives me an opportunity to try it so those are two of them. Then I have the Pilot Metropolitan. So I just have to show you a little bit about this because this pen is unbelievable for the price. So it's got this brushed metal finish and it's really smooth. It's a beautiful shape. It's nice, you know, as, as far as weight, but it's not too heavy. The gold, I was really kind of nervous because I thought that the gold would be a little bit tacky, but they didn't have the black or the silver available in any of the patterns. The little middle section has a pattern on it. You can either get the zigzag, which is what I got, or you can get one that has dots, or I think there's one that's plain. I went ahead for the zigzag because I thought it's gold. I'll get the gold and zigzag, two things that I wouldn't normally get, and it's beautiful. I love it. It's not tacky. It's not cheap looking. It's a really classy pen for the price. The clip is silver and it has some little detailing here. And I just can't believe that this pen was so cheap. I, I don't even understand it. To me, this pen is so much better looking than the Lamy Safari. As much as I like the finish on this and I think it looks really stealthy, I know people like the clip on the Lamy Safari. I hate it. I think it's so ugly. This to me looks so classy. This clip is, this clip drives me crazy. But anyway, uh, and it has the little hole for the ink, which is okay, uh, so that you can see what's going on in there. But I would have actually preferred no window, some other kind of clip. Um, but this is, is beautiful. So it comes off, and it has a nice snap to it. The cap posts well. It doesn't slide at all. It's got a good grip to it. And then the grip area itself is black. And you see how small that is? This is like the perfect size for my hand. This I love. I could write for days with this. And I even like it without the cap because it fits in my hand perfectly and it weighs like nothing. My husband preferred the cap because he has a larger hand so it kind of like rests there. But I love it without the cap. It's so comfortable and I just can't, I can't get over the price. So 
This pen came with a black cartridge, which I haven't used yet, because I, I did want to use my ink drop subscription, obviously, so I kept the black and I thought, I'll just keep that and put it in my pencil case um, if I get brave enough to bring these to work, and then I'll have like a backup in case, you know, I run out of ink. This came with a converter already, so it came with a black ink cartridge and it came with a converter. And I was a little bit intimidated when I saw them, like, I have no idea what to do with this, but it's so easy. Seriously, do not be intimidated by fountain pens and the fact that you fill them or whatever. It is it is not a big deal. So this, you just need to make sure that it's pushed firmly in. And I, I would take it out, but it has ink in it, and I don't want to spill it everywhere. So all you do is you take the, this part of the pen, <clears throat> and you dip it down into the vial. And this had 2 milliliters, and it this takes about 1 milliliter. And so you dip it into the vial all the way, you squeeze the top, and then as you let it go, you'll just see the ink suck right up into it, and that's it. It's done. Then you wipe it on a paper towel, and it's over. To clean it off, you would just put it like in a little cup of water and, you know, squeeze the little converter a few times, flush it out, and you're ready to go. It's so easy. There's no twisting or nothing. It's just squeeze it and let it go. It's brilliant. So everything about this pen is easy and I, I just think it's, this is a perfect beginning entry level fountain pen. It's cheaper than the Lamy Safari. To me it's more comfortable. It's better looking. It writes better. Um, you can swap out the nibs if you want. You can't buy nibs for this like you can for the Lamy Safari and I think that's kind of where the Safari has the edge a little bit. There's so much versatility with that pen, so that's probably why I would, you know, I'm obviously going to use it and keep it, and I'll probably buy some other nibs for it down the line. But as far as like getting your very first fountain pen, I would have so much preferred to get this over the Lamy Safari. You just, to me, it's like for your money, it's just a better pen. I, I don't know. I'll probably offend somebody by saying that. So that is that. Um, I'm going to show you writing samples now from all of them, and then I'm going to swap out this nib, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So, I'm just writing on, I'm just going to do my sample on, oops, let's see, I'll have to pick up the camera a little bit, a Rhodia blank notebook page, nothing fancy. Well, I guess it is fancy. If you're just used to, like, regular paper, it would be fancy, and it's totally worth it getting into... Um, higher end stuff, not just like, you know, what you can find necessarily at Staples or whatever. Paper is just as important as nice pens. It just, having nice things like this encourages you to write more and that opens up all kinds of doors for you as far as pen pals and just hobbies like calligraphy and um, I, I don't know, it's it's certainly um, a worthwhile endeavor, I would say. And at this point, I feel like I am too old to use junky products. It's, you know, if I use something, I want it to be of good quality. So, anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to show you this, and then I'm going to swap the nib out, and then I'll show you the other one. So, this is the Lamy Safari. This is Lamy Blue Ink. I think I'm saying it right. I don't like it lamy. I just don't think that sounds right. So, I'm going with Lamy. And, um... I'll probably have to do the writing samples like this and then show you down the paper the way that they look when I'm kind of done. So my complaint with the, the Lamy Safari blue ink is with the extra fine nib it looks really washed out but with this broad or this italic nib it looks so bold and it looks really nice so I think it just kind of depends on you know what nib you would be using. So I'm going to do some cursive and then I'm going to print so that you can see both ways. Um, as you can see, no, as you can't see, I'm going to try to angle this a little bit better. This has a really, uh, really nice flowing nib. It's, it's a wet nib and it really does make the, the ink pop. This 
This nib size makes me want to write large. I think it's because it's such a wide nib and I, I really love super narrow needlepoint pens. So I don't have a whole lot that are really thick like this. So it makes me want to write much larger than I probably need to. But I like the effect that it gives to my handwriting. I think that it's, you can definitely see the italic and it gives some variety to what kinds of things I'm able to produce as far as my handwriting goes. I'm going to do just some lines like this so that you can see the, the variation of like the broad side to the narrow side. So I'll show you all of these um, at once. But now I'm going to show you how to swap out the nib. So you just need a paper towel, tape, this, this, the pen, and the nib that you want to swap out. All you do, it's so easy, just take a little piece of tape, put it on to the nib, push down, and pull it off. That's it. You might fling a little bit of ink here and there, uh, if you're like me and a little wild with it, but that's it. Then to put the nib on, I don't know what all these parts are called. So I'm just going to slide it where the nib was, push the tip on. People would probably be like, don't push the tip of the pen. So you can just slide it and that's it. It's, it's swapped. It's done. So that's no big deal at all. Now to kind of keep some order to what I'm doing here, I'm going to try out the Pilot Plumix because this was also an italic nib but it's smaller. So, this I don't know the size, so I'm just going to put M stub italic. So, I definitely like the Lamy blue ink better than the Pilot. This, now, to me, this looks washed out, whereas before the Lamy was looking really washed out to me. I'm sure that it's because, you know, there's so much ink that's going on the page with the broad nib, but, or the, the 1.5 stub italic nib, but to me this looks washed out. This is a much more royal blue, and this is really faded. This is like faded denim. So, this doesn't necessarily have as a dramatic of effect, you know, italic effect as the other. However, you can write a lot smaller with this and it still gives that, you know, variation to your handwriting, you know, gives some sort of interest and you can see that it's italicizing it. And like I said, I'll show you this whole page in just a minute. But now I have two different italic looks, a larger one and a smaller one, and that was for what the the italic name was 13 and this pen altogether was nine dollars so where are we at we're at like what 12 oh my gosh i think no i'm sorry <laughs> i'm 12. 22 oh my gosh now i'm going to show you the pilot metropolitan in the medium size nib and that math probably isn't right either Jeez, embarrassing but i'm not making this video again um so this is the Pilot Metropolitan in the medium nib. This is with the Diatramentus Silver Gray. So, to kind of back up, like I said, this is a beginner's review of, a uh, beginner's perspective of these kind of entry-level pens. This one um, was a little bit scratchier, and the ink flowed really easily. This one was definitely scratchier than the first one. The ink flowed fairly well. This 
is not scratchy at all and the ink flows very freely. It's really smooth writing. So if you're the type of person that you like something that is going to feel smooth as you're writing, it's this. It feels so smooth it just kind of glides across the page with ease. And I mean I'm not putting like any pressure on the pen at all, just putting the pen on the page and that's what's happening. It's already, you know, it's pretty effortless. So that's the Pilot Metropolitan. And now I'll show you the Lamy Safari with the EF nib. So here it is. It's such a beautiful finish on the pen. I really do love the look. So this is with the same blue ink. So this one writes really easily on the page as well. Um, there's just a tiny bit of skipping, which could have been me, but I mean, that shouldn't make a difference, I don't think. Um, but you can see that it looks so much more washed out from here to here. Obviously, this is a super fine nib, and this was very broad, but this is why I didn't like this ink at first, because it looks like this when you write it with the extra fine nib. So I'm going to kind of fold the paper and show you. My samples. So I've got my Lamy Safari 1.5 stub italic nib and you can see the little variations in the broad and fine edge. Then I have the Pilot Plumix then the Metropolitan, and then the Lamy Safari Extra Fine. So for, what do I have? I have, uh, let's do some math here. For 9, 13, I think 16 and 26, is that right? So what is that? That's 12, 13, 15. So for $64, this is some really rough math because I'm not even sure if the pen prices are exactly right. But so let's say under $75 for sure and probably with my ink drop sample, $75. So I have four different drastically to me different looks for like 60 something bucks. I've got a broad italic nib, I have sort of a medium italic nib, a medium just regular nib. I guess, and then an extra fine nib. So depending on what effect I want to create with my handwriting, um, when I'm writing, I can get all of these different looks. And as a person that's just starting off in real fountain pens, you know, I couldn't get this variety with the Pilot Barcy. I can get it with this, and I'm sure I could have interchanged some nibs or something somewhere along the way, but I'm not, like, that complicated as far as, you know, I've seen some YouTube videos on it. This was easy, very easy, and it was fairly inexpensive. So this gives me enough variation that whatever it is I'm going to do, I feel like I have a fountain pen that I can do that with. And with my ink drop subscription coming in every month, I'm going to have a variety of inks to do that with. So I know this is a long review. I'm just not capable of doing a short review, but from a beginner's perspective, this is a great way to kind of get yourself started and feel like you have some variety but not spend a ton of money. All of this is under well under $100 and that's not too bad for starting some sort of a hobby or you know getting invested into some, some things that are like you know really nice quality. You'll be shocked at the Pilot Metropolitan and how nice it is for the price. I would say that if I were going to start over again I probably would have just bought this and not the Lamy Safari and I would have bought this because this would have been really cheap um, and then maybe later I would have added a different Lamy pen but I would have wanted to see the grip and see how large the grip was. I would have wanted something smaller and um, but I do like the interchangeability of the nibs. But I think, you know, it's kind of, this is one of the ones that people start with, and so everybody probably has their own Lamy Safari at some point, but I think I would have probably rather saved my money and got this one first. But I've got them now, and I don't regret it, certainly, at all. It's definitely usable. No super hardcore complaints. So, 
that's my sample and if you stuck with me thank you that's wonderful <laughs> um, but I hope that you found all of this helpful if you're just thinking about getting into fountain pens don't be intimidated and there's a lot out there that you can get for not that much money um, it's pretty affordable I think it's ex it's as expensive as you want to make it I've rambled enough have a nice day bye bye